So Bethesda announced a new studio at QuakeCon. This kind of came as a surprise because they just announced a new studio earlier this year with Bethesda Game Studios Austin. And in 2015, they actually announced another new studio with Bethesda Game Studios Montreal. What makes this particularly interesting is I think the rate of rapid expansion that we're seeing at Bethesda Game Studios, not just the fact that this new studio got added. If you don't know, Bethesda Game Studios Maryland is like the core studio, the minds behind Fallout, and of course the Elder Scrolls series of games. But then shortly after their release of Fallout 4, they opened a new studio with Bethesda Game Studios Montreal. These guys are said to have worked on Skyrim Special Edition as well as some of the mobile games we're seeing right now, like the Elder Scrolls Blades. Then we also got Bethesda Game Studios Austin earlier this year. This one's a little bit more unique because it seems like Bethesda Game Studios Austin, formerly Battlecry Studios, was actually working under Bethesda for quite a few years at this point, but it didn't get the official title until earlier this year. Bethesda Game Studios Austin are the major players players behind getting multiplayer working in the Fallout engine and are now working quite heavily on Fallout 76. All of this leads us to their newest announcement with Bethesda Game Studios Dallas. This was formerly Escalation Studios, a fairly small studio that actually helped and worked with Bethesda for quite a few years. They released a number of VR games themselves, but in addition actually worked on Skyrim VR, Fallout 4 VR, as well as actually getting Fallout Shelter and Doom on the Nintendo Switch. During the announcement of this new studio, one of the major pieces of of information Todd Howard did say was that they're currently working on Fallout 76 and Starfield. And I think there's a few takeaways from this announcement and the overall broader picture of all of these new Bethesda Game Studios studios getting announced over the past two plus years. So right off the bat, the fact that they have such a VR-focused studio now under their overall umbrella makes me think that pretty much all of the upcoming games will get VR ports. The question is, will it be at release? The thing with Fallout 76 is, even though I wouldn't be shocked if it eventually comes to VR, I feel like with online survival games, the VR experience will be distinctive. You kind of have to have quick reaction times and things like that to deal with other players. But I definitely wouldn't be shocked to see a VR version of Fallout 76. I don't think it'll be out at release, but at some point, I think that'd be an interesting experience and I would love to see it. And given their track record and pretty much their portfolio, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Bethesda Games Game Studios Austin is presently working on. I'm sure it'll lead to a number of people buying the base game of Fallout 76 to play with their friends, and then later on rebuying the game at a $60 price tag to get the VR version. And I would imagine they're doing something similar with their work on Starfield, or maybe even getting Switch ports for some of these games. Fallout 76 would be a little bit more difficult on the Switch because you always have to be connected to the internet and that kind of contradicts the mobile nature of that platform, but for Starfield, a predominantly single player game based off what we heard, it seems like it'd make a lot of sense. But let's look even a little bit deeper. Now Bethesda has four new studios and seemingly 300 to 400 developers working for them full time. In an interview from a while ago, Todd Howard said 300, but then with the addition of Escalation Studios that was reportedly at 50 developers and them hiring more, it seems like they'd be a little bit closer to that 400 number at this point. Now when Fallout 4 was in development, by comparison, it only had 100 developers working on it. So in the three years since Fallout 4's release, Bethesda Game Studios has effectively quadrupled in size. That is a lot of additional people, and I have a few theories as to what that means. First and foremost, and this is total speculation, I think Fallout 76 is in a later development state than Bethesda is maybe used to with announcements. Like I think Fallout 4 at E3 2015 when we first saw it was further along development cycle when compared to Fallout 76 at this E3. That being based off the beta, how they really haven't shown us a ton of the game itself but merely told us a lot about different things, and how seemingly a few things are still up in the air and being changed on the fly. Fortunately, now that they have all this additional manpower though, they probably will have no problem getting the game complete. I'm not particularly worried about that. But what I think it also means is we simply see more Bethesda Game Studios games. Even though they have expanded in other ways, such as working on a mobile game concurrent to their AAA game, and of course having Switch and VR ports along the way, they still have a lot more manpower to throw at their next up and coming AAA game, that with Starfield. In the past, we've seen three to five year gaps in between major releases from this studio. I'm speculating that now, maybe rather than having three to five year gaps, we'll see two to three year gaps, which is much more akin to a lot of other major studios at this time. This has been a major point for speculation in terms of Starfield, Bethesda has a lot more people working for them. They've consistently talked about how Fallout 76 is more of a kind of spin-off, a little bit more of a risk, trying something new. Starfield is them going back to their traditional single player experience, and at least somewhat, they're going to appeal to different audiences, people who like single player games and people who like online survival games. 
So I think it could be pretty plausible to see a Starfield release in 2020. Some people even speculate 2019, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but maybe. We do know that Bethesda started working on Starfield right after they finished Fallout 4, and then they started opening all these subsequent side studios that also could contribute to Starfield. Eventually, the main studio, and I'm sure many of these side studios, actually switched focus over to Fallout 76, but still, they got quite a bit of work on Starfield done before that. We know from interviews at E3, Starfield is presently in what they call a playable state, and even though they say it's a long way away, does a long way mean a year, does it mean two years, or does it mean five years? And of course, even the implications beyond this. Even though we know Fallout 76 is the next game, and then after that comes Starfield, I would guess the gap between Starfield and The Elder Scrolls 6 won't be massive. It's not going to be nearly as long as we saw like between Skyrim and Fallout 4. I would guess two years to be a pretty happy number. Again, this is all total speculation, but I think it's all very interesting for Bethesda to really expand so quickly in such a short period. Each of their subsequent releases over the past few years has sold more copies than the previous, and even some of their mobile games, like Fallout Shelter being Bethesda Game Studios most played game ever. The fact that it still gets consistent updates is an indicator to me that it's probably making a good amount of money even today, almost three years after release. So what does it take away from all of this? I think we're going to see more VR ports from Bethesda, and more VR focus on some of their newer games, not just their older ones, and in beyond that, I think we see a faster rate of release of new Bethesda Game Studios titles. Titles. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, but before we end things off, I do want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day, and that's going to be on, I guess, kind of toxicity or bad news. So we hear a lot about people being toxic nowadays, whether it being YouTube drama, getting tons of views, or even just negativity in the news or on social media. Is that real though? Do people actually prefer or focus more so on toxic material than happy-go-lucky or feel-good material? Well, one group of researchers wanted to find out more about this. They got a thousand or specifically 1,254 participants to download their app on their smartphones and would subsequently be sent news articles from that app, ping different stories, Certain participants receive news of more moral acts, so good things happening in society around them, and it follows that those people actually started to feel a little bit better, gave them kind of a warm glow feeling, and overall participants in this particular group saw twice as many moral acts as immoral acts or bad things. Every so often they'd get another ping actually asking them how they felt or what kind of things they had seen in that day. Considering the ratio of good to bad was 2 to 1, you would think they would report hearing about twice as much good things as bad things. Well, it was actually the opposite. Opposite. People reported about hearing twice as many bad things as good things, even though that was totally contradictory to what actually was happening. And more or less, the takeaway from the study was people were more focused on the negative. It made them feel more, they had more intense emotions as a result of that, and evidently, based off their self-report after the fact, they felt like they were hearing more about it. In a way, it kind of diluted what they thought was happening in the world because they thought it was really bad. In reality, they were hearing a lot of good. I'll have a link to the study and actually someone's interpretation of the study down below. But either way, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.